My focus is on individual defensiveness. Um, by the way, Mr. Branch is my supervisor. All right, so I looked at the relationship between individual defensiveness and different forms of learning in organizations, not in the sense of being taught, but in the sense of whether the organization itself does things that promotes learning within the organization for improvement and performance. My definition of defensiveness is the degree to which an individual consciously or unconsciously engages in any reality negotiating activity, whether it's cognitive, affective, or behavioral, because of a motive to psychologically protect an aspect of self from perceived threat. I looked at different forms of defensiveness. Most people know that we are defensive in terms of having ego defense mechanisms. I also looked at defensive impression management and I looked at political defensive behaviors. In terms of the ego defense mechanisms, I looked more at defensive styles as opposed to the specific mechanisms. Uh, when we talk about defensiveness, we're really talking about somebody who is trying to protect themselves from anxiety and stress, and it, it comes naturally to most of us. It's not necessarily seen as bad. You can have extreme levels of defensiveness, however, and it can become maladaptive. Mm -hmm. Essentially, what I'm looking at is the relationship between how individuals display their ego defensiveness, their defensive impression management, and their political defensive behaviors, and how that affects the extent to which they're interested in sharing knowledge in the organization, and the extent to which they're interested in performing their roles innovatively. There's a lot of literature to suggest that defensiveness is related to learning. One of the things that is important in my study is that I looked at the three different forms of defensiveness. You don't usually see a focus on defensive impression management, which is the idea that you're trying to protect your self-image, and you don't usually see a focus on political defensive behaviors, which is the interest in protecting your self-interest. You don't want anybody to make demands on you, so you try to avoid certain activities. It's important to say as well that there are social defenses, and those are different from organizational defenses. Sorry, those are different from individual defenses. Social defenses characterize the organization. Um, and you can, you can have an organization that is considered to be defensive because it has organizational defensive routines. Another key point for my work was to try to develop a model of defensiveness that incorporated stuff like what Sophia was doing, identity, self-identification in terms of defensiveness. So you define yourself in terms of the way you display defensiveness. That required, uh, required me to think of um, dimensions of defensiveness. Usually you think about Usually you think about defensiveness as unconscious, but if you incorporate the political defensive behaviors, it must include conscious behaviors. So you have a continuum where people can be aware that they're defensive and still try to protect them, a part of themselves. And you can also have the, the usual defenses where you're not aware that you're doing it, but you're distorting your reality to relieve your anxiety. Right, I won't go through um, any of the literature. I'll get to some of the objectives. So essentially what I was trying to do was to examine one organization, a large university, and to describe the different forms of defensiveness that I saw. Because there is no literature that says we, we are defensive in these different ways and at these different levels. So I wanted to describe the three different forms within that sample. The other thing that I wanted to do was to qualitatively demonstrate defensiveness in how people spoke. So there is a quantitative aspect to the study which looked at 
quantitative measures of defensiveness. And then there is a qualitative aspect to see in how people speak, can you pick up some of the defensive behaviors. Another thing that I tried to do was, again, quantitatively look at the relationship between those three forms of defensiveness that I pointed out and the extent to which you feel psychologically safe in the organization, the extent to which you wanted to share knowledge with your colleagues, and the extent to which you wanted to perform your role innovatively. On the qualitative side, I examined a particular process that was going on in the university at the time and did some interviews to see the extent to which people's expressions of their defensiveness would be related to their attitudes towards a particular IT implementation process. The hypotheses really were that the more defensive you are, the less you're likely to share knowledge and the less you're likely to perform innovatively as well as the more you would be resistant to, in terms of your attitudes to the IT implementation process. I mentioned a bit of this before. It's, it is two studies in one, qualitative and quantitative. The data were collected in 2012. Um, my sample for the quantitative, 493 respondents stratified proportionate random sample. I got a good response rate, 80.6%. Um, persons took about 30 to 40 minutes to fill out those questionnaires. Very quickly, the ego defense styles, I looked at maladaptive and adaptive. That's how I looked at ego defense. It was measured by the defense style questionnaire. One subpart of my study involved having to determine if these styles, the maladaptive and the adaptive, actually fit the data in Jamaica. And the originators of the scale had four different styles. What my results showed was that two styles made most sense, maladaptive and adaptive. For the defensive impression management, I was able to use measures that are associated with socially desirable responding, SDR measures. Uh, for the political defensiveness, I used a measure by Blake Ashforth. And for the desire to share knowledge, I had developed five items before, and those proved to be useful. There is a scale that also measures the innovative performance. That's from Wellborn, Johnson, and Ires. Okay. For the qualitative aspect, the interviews, the way that I was able to elicit defensive behaviors in the interview was based on a an interview that was designed by Lisa Feldman Barrett. She developed the Defensive Verbal Behavior Assessment Tool, and it was designed to make persons feel a bit anxious during an interview process, and she has a scoring mechanism for you to determine whether the person was high, moderate, or low in defensiveness, or you could even get zero. What did I find? First of all, I was able to confirm that in, in the sample population, maladaptive and adaptive was the best factor model. In terms of the prevalence, in general, there, was, there were low averages for political defensive behaviors, maladaptive defensive style, and defensive impression management. So generally, people scored low on these. People scored moderately on the adaptive style. I also found that the adaptive style and maladaptive style were not significantly correlated. Now let me just give you a sense of what the maladaptive style might look like. A person would be acting out and being impulsive, getting aggressive or pushing too far, fantasizing by daydreaming. They would also perhaps be shy and inhibited. They might feel numb in the face of problems. They might put down others, sulk. They might feel mistreated, feel robbed emotionally. 
Um, they may even get sick, uh, feel ill when they face some stress, and they may see things in terms of totally being good or bad. Persons who exhibited the adaptive style tended to suppress problems until they could deal with them. They used creative ways to manage their stress and anxiety, and they feel, they feel like they could deal with their problems, they felt fearless, and they, used, they tended to see the funny side of problems. In terms of whether different job categories show differences in defensiveness, persons who had technical and professional jobs scored higher on political defensiveness than academics. So in other words, they wanted to protect their self-interest and fend off demands more than academics. Academics, on the other hand, tended to be more protective of their image. So they scored higher on defensive impression management than the technical professional persons. Administrative personnel scored higher on maladaptive ego defense style than academics. For the adaptive style, there were no significant differences really, no gender differences. The only thing I found is that in terms of age, the oldest persons tended to score the highest on the adaptive style, which makes sense. I have a, di well, I have a diagram here. Essentially, I did structural, structural equation modeling, and I was able to show that the maladaptive style predicts political defensive behaviors, and then that predicts your desire to share knowledge. So if, if you have lower levels of the maladaptive style, you're less likely to demonstrate political defensive behaviors, and you're more likely to want to share knowledge with your colleagues. So it, it ended up showing that the more defensive you were, the less likely you would want to share knowledge with your colleagues. Another important finding was that the more psychological safety you felt within your environment, the more likely you would want to share knowledge with your colleagues. Um, in terms of the adaptive style, the more you demonstrated the adaptive style of defenses, the more you wanted to share knowledge with your colleagues and the more you wanted to display uh, innovation in your performance. The last thing that I will do, I have time, last thing that I will do is to give you a little bit in terms of the qualitative findings. As I said, it's an interview that was done uh, with about nine different persons. All, who, all of these persons went through the particular IT change process and I interviewed them about their experience with the process and I had to analyze those transcripts to figure out using um, Feldman Barrett's scale to determine how defensive each person was. Now I interviewed somebody whose alias is Irene and I asked her about um, how much she was involved in the process and how she felt about it. And so she started off by saying it was tedious and she was laughing. I think I say tedious because I wasn't involved fully in the initial stages. Meaning if they had training or, you know, sensitization to the aspects of the whole process, um, I was just thrown into the deep end, if you can put it that way. I was just assigned to do this, and I was just given general instructions on how to do it, which caused problems. Um, based on the scoring, that turns out to be a three, a high ego defensive behavior. Now, it's not necessarily the best illustration. I have another one. Um, so I, again, asking Irene about her role, her possible role in problems that took place with the process. And she says, um, no, uh, it um, might or it may have happened, but um, again, it boils down to our unit being somewhat unique, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then she goes on to say, but it usually, it usually does happen and we try for it not to happen and then, 
I think if it has happened, so she goes from saying it, it did happen to, well, it doesn't really happen. So she's in between admitting whether she had any role um, in any challenges that came up with the process. The interviews also demonstrated political defensive behaviors. So in terms of one person who had a role in the process, he was saying, um, yes, I did. I did, in that part when, when this person was affected, I started to write and I started to come to my office and so on. I sort, I sort of justified the behavior. I made excuses, but I thought it was justified in that I'm not the only one who provides what was promised. I'm not the only one responsible for doing this thing. So yes, I consider that a justifiable excuse. Um, there was some foot dragging, yes, sometimes, because especially if what you're doing, you don't see it as, a, as your responsibility or should have been done by somebody else, um, you don't do it with any alacrity. You won't, um, you know, so there have, been, there have been, for example, at the start of the semester, my administrator was writing to me to say that I should start to call the people to find out about the process, but I say that's not my responsibility. So that's another way of fending off um, stress on yourself, and that's the political defensive behaviors. I will end by, say, by stating some implications for the results. Persons who tend to dis display maladaptive defensive style are prone to displaying the political defensive behavior, so there is a correlation. Um, there is also some use in promoting the mature defenses and we can see that mature defenses, that's the adaptive, would promote learning within the organization. And consultants should also try to foster a culture of psychological safety because that also leads to positive learning behaviors. That's it. Thank you.